Column grid lines are used to equally space your columns in your project. They're also used to be able to quickly locate your columns in your project. To draw in column grid lines, you'll find underneath the Architecture tab on the ribbon, on the Datum panel, there's a command called Grid. Select on the Grid command, move your mouse down into the drawing area, over in the left-hand side toward the bottom, between these two elevation tags, make your first click. Move your mouse straight up, then click again just a little bit below this top elevation tag, but straight up at a 90 degree angle. If you zoom in at the top, you'll notice that this is a number one. This is our first grid bubble. Revit likes to keep things in order, which means the next one that we draw will be number two. The one after that will be number three. The same thing would happen if we had letters. So if this was going to be A, the next one would be B, and the following one would be C. Zoom back out, move your cursor down toward the bottom of the screen again. When you see these temporary dimensions show up, I don't care exactly what the dimension is at the moment, we will adjust this later. So just click when you see that temporary dimension. Move your cursor up on the screen. When you're lined up with the column grid bubble up at the top of this grid line, you'll see a dashed line going between the two grid bubbles. Click when you see that dashed line. This means that these two grid bubbles are lined up with one another. Let's do the same thing for the third grid bubble. Come straight up and click again. Now if we wanted to have a specific distance between these, we can do that as well. As soon as you see this temporary dimension show up, in this case it shows up as being 25 feet on my screen, type in 20. This is going to give us a 20 foot distance between the first one that we place and the next one that we place. Hit enter. And you can see that it's now made a 20 foot spacing between this one, which was the last one that we had placed, and this one, which is the spot that we just clicked. Come up, click there, and do this one more time. You can either type in a dimension or just eyeball it, clicking and moving straight up. If we zoom in, we'll see that it's one through five. Because of that order, it means that the next one that we will have will be number six. The reality is, though, is I want to go from right to left, and in doing that, we want to switch this from being numbers to letters. There's really no way to be able to do this on the fly, so we have to place the first one in and then adjust it after it's been placed. So click over here to the right hand side, move over, and click again. You'll see a number six show up. Hit escape a couple of times on the keyboard, select on the grid line, click where the number six is at, and change that to be an A and then click out here into space. Then hit escape on the keyboard to get out of the command. The next thing we'll do is draw in two more, so we'll be drawing in B as well as C. And since this last one was A, Revit will automatically label these as B and C. Once again, under the Architecture tab, above Datum, select on Grid. Move your mouse down when it's lined up with the endpoint of the other one, click, move over, and click again. And do the same thing one more time. Zoom out just a touch. We're gonna to see that our grid lines come down pretty far, actually a little bit farther than what we probably need them to be. We will adjust these after the fact. What I would like to do now is be able to equally space these between number one and number five. To do that, we need to add a few dimensions in. So come up here to annotate, select on aligned, and click the line associated with grid number one, then click the line associated with number two, number three, number four, number five, then click out in space. It's important that you click out in space because if you hit the space bar, the dimension will go away. After clicking all the way on across, click the little EQ that shows up. This will equally space between the first one and the last one in the dimension string. Now do the same thing between A, B, and C. Click out in space and select the EQ. We also want to be able to have these spaced a specific dimension apart. To be able to accomplish that, let's drop in two overall dimensions. Click where the number one is at, click where the number five is at, click out in space. Do the same thing with A and C, click out in space. When you're done with that process, hit escape a couple times on your keyboard to get out of the command. Zoom in so that you can see this dimension. In this case, it's showing up as being 83 feet. What I'd really like this to be is 80 feet. 
So move your cursor over and select on the line associated with your grid number five. Come back over again. You'll notice that this dimension is now blue. Whenever the dimension is blue, it means that you can change that information. So click where it has the 83 feet and just type in 80. This will give you an 80 foot spacing between the first and the last. And then click somewhere in the white drawing area. It's automatically moved these grid bubbles and they're continuously equally spaced. Over here at the side, I don't want this to be 40 feet 6 inches, I'd like it to be 48 feet. So move your mouse down, select on the grid line, come up, select the dimension, type in 48, then click out in space. Finally, to see that equal spacing, move your mouse up, select on the dimension strain, and you notice that it says equality text. Change that to be value underneath your properties. So now they're spaced every 20 feet. And do the same thing on the side. So by drawing in your column grid bubbles and placing these dimensions, you can quickly draw in your column grid lines and be able to equally space your columns when it comes time to place your columns in your project.